What's going on guys? It's Ken from Ken PT. Just wanted to make a short video about the deep squat. Recently, I've been hearing about, um, you know, the primal squat. Uh, we should be able to do a deep squat. That's our resting position. Like look at a baby, like a one or maybe like a two year old, three year old, four year old, even a five year old, how they have that perfect squat. You hear both sides, you hear people saying, yeah, we need to get back to our natural form and practice that deep squat. And you hear the other side, which is, oh, you know, we change as we get, as we uh, age, we don't have the same uh, uh, torso to leg relationship or uh, we don't have as long of a torso relative to our lower extremity as we become adults and we're not the same as our ancestors. Our, uh, our bony anatomy has changed over time. I don't really wanna take a side on this. I wanna be right in the middle, not even in the middle, but I see where both sides are coming from. And I'm gonna speak uh, about this from my experience and then something I observe in people and an interest of mine that maybe I'll, maybe I'll start a little research project. Well, the first thing is my personal experience with practicing a deep squat. I broke my ankle in 2015, I think it was. Really bad injury, dislocated it completely, was non-weight bearing for a few uh, months. To this day, I don't have as much dorsiflexion as I want to. That's the motion where your ankle goes like this towards your face, very important motion. So to me, the deep squat is a good chance to help with that range of motion. The deep squat also feels really good on my knees, feels good on my back, feels good on my hips. And in the deep squat position, I find I get to, I can work on my thoracic extension strength in that position because it locks out my lower back, if you will. So just from that experience point of view, I'm a fan of the deep squat and you could even hold on with your hands. It feels really nice on the low back. I have some of my patients do it and they, uh, they really like the position. Making sure that their heels and toes stay down. The second thing I would like to talk about is So I was watching, I'll just say it. So I was watching a video. Um, it's called Vietnamese $2 Street Massage. This guy in Vietnam gives uh, these massages on the streets, on the side of the street. And this guy's mobility is something else. He's not a baby. He's not five years old. He's not three, two, one. He's, he's a fully developed male. I would guess he's, I don't know, 30s. He's probably older, but he just looks great. This guy's deep squat is unbelievable. He'll be massaging the guy. He'll be sitting on his butt while his feet are flat on the floor and just effortlessly shift his weight forward into a deep squat, rest there for a while, do more things. He does cupping on the guy and then he'll just stand up like nothing even happened. I can't get in that position. Now, what's the difference between me and this gentleman? Is it that he has been he has been performing this movement his entire life, and he's he made it a habit, and I have not? Is it that he has greater hip mobility, ankle and knee mobility than I do, maybe because of the habitual practice, or is it that he he being him? and maybe uh, where he is in the world, he has a different bone structure than I do, being from the West, um, I'm not sure. And that leads me into my third thing I would like to talk about, which I'm inter interested in. I was talking to my friend, uh, we'll call him JT, uh, great with physics, and I was talking to my father too about why people who have longer torsos relative to their body height have an easier time deep squatting. You know, they were talking about uh, moment arms. It gets pretty tricky. 
I like, again, I talked about this in one of my other videos, I like to know the why for things. Why is it easier for people, for someone who's six feet, who has a longer torso, than the guy who is also six feet that has a shorter torso and longer legs? Why is it easier for that longer torso guy relative to his body height to squat deeper? Well, they talked uh, much about moment arms and uh, levers and uh, where we're generating the force, like how low it is uh, from the ground, things like that, center of mass. So that's what I want to do. I want to start measuring people's uh, heights, length, and then measuring their feet to, or their tibia and femur length and compare that to their torso. Because with a baby or a small child, usually their torsos make up a greater percentage of their height than, let's say, mine or an adult's torso. I wonder if you go to Vietnam and take 100 random people and you go um, to some small town in Indiana and you take both of their... Uh, both of their body lengths and then look at their femur and tibia and their torsos would the people of East Asia have more, uh, a longer torso relative to their body length compared to that small town in Indiana I don't know I'm curious of that if not then why are they having this uh, an easier time deep squatting maybe it's the uh, the habit and the greater mobility but either way either way I don't think it's good to take uh, to just knock off or knock out the deep squat I'm sure we're not like our ancestors sure I don't have the same body proportions as a baby I, I know that but I still think it's 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 uh, interesting and advantageous to work on your deep squat mobility especially if you're an athlete and you have to lower your levels So yeah, that's what I wanted to talk about in this video. I kind of, I kind of blabbered on for seven, eight minutes there. Sorry about that. And uh, take from this video what you will. Take it with a grain of salt. Until next time, guys. Keep smiling. I'll talk to you later. This is Ken from Ken PT signing out. Bye bye.